Hello everyone, and welcome back to Main Tech. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any of our videos. Today we have a Dell Latitude 3440 2023 model, priced as configured at $1,284 USD. However, before I get to this review, I'm super happy to announce our first giveaway. As of this video, the channel currently has 243 subscribers. Once we get 500 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away at a minimum, a two terabyte NVMe SSD. So if you're not subscribed, please take a few seconds out of your day and hit the subscribe button. First, a few housekeeping items before we start. This laptop was not provided to me for a review. I purchased this laptop for a customer at the request. Regarding testing setup, this laptop is running Windows 11 Pro with all Windows updates as of May 15th, 2023. Furthermore, I ran Dell's command update utility to ensure all device drivers and firmware was up to date. One last thing I'd like to note, the Dell command update utility reported the BIOS is fully up to date. However, after checking on Dell's website, there was a newer BIOS revision, which I installed. Command update only provided BIOS version 1.2, where Dell's website provides version 1.3. Lastly, I ensure the Intel graphics driver and the Intel RST, rapid storage technology, was also fully patched with the most recent versions before testing. At first glance, the Latitude 3440 presents a professional, sleek aesthetic. Its robust build quality is expected of the Latitude series. This laptop weighs 3.42 pounds, is 5.6 inches deep, and 12.7 inches wide, and is 0.7 inches thick. Let's start off by the screen. The Latitude 3440 comes with a pretty standard display. It's not exactly the sharpest or the brightest on the market, providing decent color reproduction and viewing angles. It's more than adequate for everyday tasks like document editing, web browsing, or video calls. This model is equipped with a 14-inch 1080p touchscreen display with a 300-nit peak brightness, which is the highest amount you can get out of any configurable screen with this model. You can choose between a 250-nit IPS screen with or without IR for Windows Hello, or a 768p TN panel non-touchscreen with only 220 nits of brightness, which I would highly recommend staying away from. Now, let's talk performance. This machine comes with Intel's latest 13th generation i5-1335U CPU. As expected from any new release right now, the 13th generation CPUs do a fantastic job. This CPU has two performance cores and eight efficiency cores, which yields a total of 12 threads. On the Passmark CPU performance test, this laptop scored a total of 17,156 points on the CPU mark with a score of 3,613 on the single core test. Taking a look at some comparisons, this laptop's CPU performance falls right in between the flagship 9th and 10th generation desktop CPUs in multi-core performance and nearly identical to an 11th generation i9 mobile CPU. On single thread performance, this CPU is faster than all the CPUs mentioned above. Remember, Passmark is free to download and run to compare your computer with these results. Taking a look at Cinebench, this laptop scored 3,182 points on the multi-threaded test and 636 points on the single-thread test. This next set of tests factor in not only the CPU, but SSD as well as RAM speed. This PC has 16 gigabytes of DDR4, not 5, in dual-channel mode, so two 8GB sticks. The SSD is a 512 gig Gen 3 NVMe drive made by Kaoxia specifically, the BG5 model. This laptop scored an overall score of 3,920 on the Passmark performance test. Moving over to PCMark 10, this laptop scored an overall score of 5,090 on the standard test, 4,382 points on the full extended test, and 4,800 on the express test. Taking a look at SSD speed, this drive in this laptop was able to read just over 3 gigabytes per second and 2.7 gigabytes per second write on sequential or large file transfers and hit 460 megabytes a second random read and 372 megabytes a second random write. Over on the Passmark Disk Mark test, this drive scored 22,709 points. This SSD compares to the common Samsung 980 Pro, Patriot Viper, Sabrent Rocket 4.0 NVMe SSDs. Very acceptable performance from what I consider pretty budget price. Moving over to the last set of performance benchmarks, this laptop scored 4,223 points on a 3 Mark CPU profile test and 16,600 points on the storage benchmark. This laptop will handle normal business suite of applications smoothly and even some light photo editing with ease. If you're looking for a reliable work machine for normal everyday tasks, this laptop will be totally fine. Typing on the Latitude 3440 is a decent experience. The keys have a good travel, they're well spaced, and they provide acceptable feedback. 
honestly. Nothing special here, but they're okay. The trackpad is also just okay. It's on the smaller side. It's responsive and smooth, but if you're someone who really relies on multi-touch gestures or just like that larger trackpad like on a MacBook, you may find the size a bit limiting. In this era of virtual meetings, a good webcam is a must. However, the webcam on the Latitude 3440 is rather basic in my opinion, but I'll let you be the judge as I'm recording this portion from the webcam and built-in microphone. It'll get you through your Zoom or Teams meetings, but don't expect any high-quality imaging here. For casual use, it's passable, but professionals may want to invest in a dedicated webcam for better clarity. One last thing to note is this webcam is 1080p, however, it only goes to 30fps. Now, let's talk battery life. This laptop ran for 5 hours and 31 minutes before powering down. The battery mode was set to balanced with a screen brightness at what I would consider about 60%. Recharge time from 3 to 100% was 2 hours and 18 minutes. My final battery test consisted of playing a YouTube video on loop with audio at 50% in which the laptop was able to play for 4 hours and 48 minutes from 100% back down to 3% before powering off. I would expect this laptop to last about 4 hours in real world use before having to grab a charger. Lastly, let's talk thermals. One thing to note about this laptop is anytime you put this machine under a full load for more than 2 minutes, it will start to hit thermal throttle or slow down the speed of the CPU to keep the temperatures in check. After just two minutes, the CPU hits a peak temperature of 95 degrees Celsius before cutting power down to the CPU and reducing performance. This laptop does turbo boost up to 4.59 GHz in my testing, but in running the full Passmark suite of tests, it averages only 2.3 GHz. One thing I'd like to note, don't let the thermals deter you from considering this laptop, as this is a case for nearly all laptops of this size. In normal office tasks, you should not run into any issues unless you are out in the field in a hotter environment. In conclusion, the Dell Latitude 3440 is a solid business class laptop. It offers reliable performance, a decent keyboard, and functional trackpad, though it could do with a few improvements in the screen, touchpad, and webcam department. If you're in the market for a good business class laptop, this could be a good option to consider. That's it for the review of the Dell Latitude 3440 2023 model. Don't forget, like this video if you found it helpful and share it with someone who might be considering this laptop. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts or any questions you might have. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date on the 500 subscriber giveaway. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.